Hi guys. Um, nice to see you all again. Well, nice to talk to you guys again. Um, my name is Melanie, also known as Cozy Cardigans on Instagram and Unravelry, and welcome to a new podcast episode. I think it's episode 10, I believe. Um, and yeah, got a little bit of stuff to update you with. Got one FO, started a new cast on, and have plans on another cast on. So, um, yeah. How are you guys doing? Um, it's getting a little bit hotter here in Osaka, so I'm not wearing any knits today. But I'll start off with my FO. Finally finished. So I started this when I first arrived here in Japan about three months ago, which is a while. But anyways, it has a lot of cables. So it's this. It's, this is the Ondawa sweater by mm, Michelle Wang, I want to say. Uh, should have looked this up before I started. Yep, Michelle Wang. So for Brooklyn Tweed, so let me show it to you guys again. So it's got all these nice cables and it fits on like a boat neck. Let me just put it on for you guys so you can see what it looks like. So this is what it looks like. It's um, not super cropped because I wear high-waisted pants, so I mean my waist is here. So it's not super cropped, which is good for me. Um, so one thing, so as you can see, the sleeves are a little shorter than, um, I think, I think in the end it should, the model kind of shows it three-quarter sleeves like this. Yeah, so as I was saying, so I wanted it to be longer, but I played yarn chicken, so I had like half a ball of yarn left when I was starting to knit the sleeves. So I knit these sleeves two at a time so that they would be even and that I could just knit it as long as possible um, with that little ball of yarn. So it ended up with the three quarter sleeve length, which isn't bad at all. Um, I really like the color that I used. I was looking for something dark that would still show the cabling really well. And I don't know if you guys are able to notice any mistakes, but I did make a couple cabling mistakes in here. Um, that hopefully you're not able to see super well because of the dark color. Um, but I couldn't really, once I noticed it, I was like, almost at the shoulders and I really couldn't be bothered and so there's that and also what else did I do differently my gauge was a little different so I think my gauge ended up being a lot smaller than the gauge called for so according to the measurements I was supposed to make a size two. I was supposed to make a size two, but I ended up using the instructions for size five because my gauge was so small and just, I just knit it up like a five. And then also, um, except for the length parts, cause I knew that my length was fine. It was just more like the width gauge was off. Um, so I followed the measurements for size 5, length for size 2, and ended up perfectly. So um, I used uh, Drops Lima um, for this. It's a good affordable yarn. Um, I know Drops isn't like the best company out there, but I do not usually buy very I've never knit with Brooklyn Tweed before, so 
mostly because of their price point, which is wasn't really wasn't really my in my range for quite a while. I might buy some now, but I still have yarn left over, maybe later. But yeah, anyway, so I used Drops Lima. Worked really well. It shows the cabling really nicely. This is the colorway Petrol, and it's just this really nice, very dark teal that looks almost navy until you like come a little closer. And then you kind of see that it's more of like a dark teal. So I love this. This is great. Um, anything I would do differently? Probably make it cropped a little shorter next time. Probably like one less um, cable repeat. That's probably it. I like how you could choose the um, neck width up here so you could make it a little tighter if you want or a little longer because you knit the front back and sleeves and panels and then you um, stitch them all together in the end which was the first for me because um, I usually just knit things um, not separate what do you call that all together I knit things seamlessly so this was my one of I think I might have knitted another yeah, I haven't knitted a non-seamless sweater in a long time, so this was this was a fun little thing to uh, try out. It was super easy, just seam the sides, the top, and then around the armhole. Um, one thing though is that since I did run out of yarn from the sleeves, I had to use like some scrap, not scrap yarn, but like a different colored. I just used like a dark purple yarn so it wouldn't show up too much around the armholes. And so first I knit it or I seamed it too loosely. So you could see like when you look from the outside you could see the purple seam from the outside because it was a bit too loose. So I realized I had to seam it a little tighter for it to not show up on the outside that it was purple. And so the arms are a little like not very it doesn't really have that much give to it um but it's not that big of a deal because it's not super high up on my um upper arm where it's like thickest um it's a little more towards my elbow where it's a little slimmer so it doesn't really bother me too much when i like lift my arms and stuff and it has this nice little square shape but yeah it's super comfy and now that i look at it on camera it looks really good um I don't really have a full length mirror here at home yet, so I've been kind of like trying to peek in the bathroom mirror, which isn't the best way to, it doesn't look too flattering when you try to squeeze yourself into a mirror like that, so I haven't really been able to take a look-see, and it's way too hot to go outside in it, so yeah, this is my FO. Um, I'm going to take it off now, it's really hot. Okay. So yep, this is the only thing that I finished um, so far since I've last talked to you guys. Um, and since I finished that, I went ahead and cast on something new. It's just, it's a little tangled. It's just a little, little strip right now, but this is another beanie for my husband. Um, if you guys haven't watched my other episodes, um, if you're new, my husband really likes hand-knit beanies. I've never knit a sweater for him or a cardigan or whatever. He just wants beanies and socks. So this is his fifth hand-knit beanie um, and I'm using this Manos to Del, sorry, Manos del Uruguay Wool Clasica. It's this, um, let me see if I can show you. It's this thick singles yarn. It's like a, 
want to say like a heavy worsted weight kind of yarn. Um, and hold oh, all my stuff is tangled now. Um, yeah. So it's this thick singles yarn and heavy worsted weight. Um, not really doing anything special to it. It's just a regular one by one rib beanie. Same recipe that I use every single time. Um, but I, I use the same recipe, but, um, since he chooses, I let him choose whichever yarn, um, and don't really pay attention to, like, the, um, the weight of it. I just change the cast on amount depending on the gauge that the yarn gives me. So... This one's a little more on the thicker side. It's also very like thick and thin. I don't know if you could see that, but it's like, I'm trying to show you. Oh yeah. So it's a very thick and thin yarn. You could kind of see that it's like nubby. So that's the only thing that's really different about it. Other than that, it's like the usual thing. This is like my not really, he likes a, tight gauge on his um, beanies so um, I can't really work on it too long without having my wrists hurt from it because I even though it's like heavy worsted weight I still use I think this is a size US size 2 yeah US size 2 needle <clears throat> to get like a tighter gauge for it so it's like a bit um, bit harder on my hands <coughs> excuse me a bit harder on my hands so um I have to like kind of put it down sometimes and what else still knitting on my plumpy shawl Oops. I think I'm still kind of in the same section that I showed you guys I think last time I showed I showed I was talking to you guys I was in this garter stitch area of this dark purple and then right now I am oh this is the wrong side and right now I am in the brioche stitch section with the two color garter stitch and it's looking great so far I really like that I chose or if you guys saw the last couple episodes, you know that I didn't really choose. I just used scrap yarn, whatever was available at my house here. But um, I'm glad that I ended up with these two purples and this pop of like gray down here. I think it looks really good actually. And it'll look great on my neck. It's very my color, even though the, um, so I'm using my fractal hand spun um the ball looks very small and alarming to me right now especially since i feel i don't i i started the decreases on this side on the like two color garter stitch side so that kind of makes me feel better that this um shawl is starting to end but I'm still increasing on this brioche side, which is alarming because it uses up a lot of hand spun and I only have one ball of this, so I have to figure something out if I do run out of this, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, so yeah, I'm really liking it so far. I'm really glad I was able to find a use for this, um, fractal spin because one it was my first fractal spin two it took a really long time to make this ball of yarn and um three the colors I love to spin bright happy colors when I'm spinning but I'm not as you can tell I like to wear dark colors personally so I was wondering how I could use this brightly colored it looks dark right here because the dark colors on the outside but as you can see 
from the brioche. It's actually a very brightly colored yarn and I was trying to figure out what to do with it without having to knit socks out of it because it was a bit too precious to me to use it for socks. So I thought a shawl might be great and then I thought a shawl with darker colors combined with it might be even better. So I'm really glad this worked out. I think the fractal yarn looks so good here. It's made like this really subtle nice stripiness to it actually which I mean is to be expected but I totally forgot that that happens when you knit up fractal yarn and I think it looks so good and I'm really proud that I hand knit I mean I hand spun like these colors together it's really great so I'm this is my next like hardcore I'm trying to finish this kind of knit and also I'm still chugging along on this um this is not so much hardcore I'm trying to knit because this is really slow going but this is the Morkella cardigan by Whitney Hayward for um, Harrisville Designs. So um, this is very slow going. This is, I'm using a palette yarn by Knit Picks. Um, and it's this nice like ribbed texture cardigan. Um, I need to knit this to eight inches and as you can see, it's probably like just one inch and it's taking me forever, which is fine with me. I'm a very like process driven knitter, so it's not that big of a deal to me to have to knit something for so long. But yeah, this is just like my um, not really paying attention kind of knit because um, it actually, even though it's a ribbed texture, it doesn't use any... Um, purling. It's just knit stitches and slipped stitches to make this, which is really cool. I think, I think I love that it's like a ribbed, I really wanted like a ribbed squishy cozy cardigan, but, um, didn't really want to go through all the purling, mostly because I was kind of tired of like, not that there was so much purling on this Ondawa, but, um, I didn't want something to concentrate so hard on and so I thought this might be great and I have enough yarn for it and I think a mustard cardigan is a must in my wardrobe and I don't have one so I thought this would be good so I'm just like working on this when I'm on the train and stuff and last thing that I was thinking about uh, casting on this other sweater called the Udo sweater or the Udo pullover by uh, by I should really look up these people before I start it's just called the Udo by Arlene Suk Suchi um for uh, oh man I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put the name and stuff up here because I'm really bad with pronouncing names and I really don't want to mess it up so look over here for that. Um, inspired by my Instagram friend Bronte. Um, she made one um, for herself and I really liked it. She has great style and so I have a lot of uh, palette yarn left from my twig sweater by Junko Okamoto. Um, I still have to take pictures of that, but, um, so I'll just put, like, a little process picture up here for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about. But, um, so I have a lot of yarn left for that, and they all match together really nicely, and I thought, why not make another sweater out of it? So, I have the Udo sweater in mind. I knit this little little color work swatch out of the scraps that I have. It looks so good. So the I was planning to have the main color be this um very light beige color, but now that I'm looking at it, I think I kind of want this rusty brown color to be the main color and then have this 
beige be the um, first contrast color. So the collar is this top part and it's knit um, yoke down. So I really like that this brighter color is on top. I like the order of these colors. I kind of just want to maybe mix up the contrast and main color a little bit towards the end here. There's still technically a little bit more um, color work stuff going on down here and then it becomes the main color for everything else. It's just the color work is just um, the yolk part. So I'm thinking I'll fudge things a little bit so that because I do like this collar here, this beige pop of little beige bubbles here. Like I do like this order of things but I just think that like the whole thing being this brown color might be really nice. So I was thinking about that. I don't have enough of the brown here in Japan to make um to use that brown as the main color. I only have enough of the light beige so I thought I'll hold off on it a little bit. I am I am going back to America for a little bit, for a couple months, um, just because my husband doesn't have his long-term visa for here yet. I'm a, I'm a citizen, so I'm okay, but obviously I would like to stay with my husband. So um, we're just going to be, it'll be like a weird vacation, I guess, because, I mean, we're, we're from America, as you can tell, but... Um, our home is, we bought a home here in Japan, so I guess it'll be like a weird reverse vacation type of thing. Um, we're hoping to come back here to Japan in August. Um, so meanwhile, I have time to knit and do things and see family and friends that I haven't seen for a few months, so that will be nice. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm planning to just hold off on this for a little bit. We are leaving in like a couple of days, so I could wait. Um, so yeah, I'll be casting that on when we're back in the States. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for knitting. I do, so we are going to be flying. Our trip is very going to be very, very long. So for those of you who don't know the amount of time it takes to get from LA to Japan and vice versa or LA to like say Tokyo and vice versa is uh, about 11 or 12 hours and then it takes about an hour between Tokyo and Osaka a domestic flight so I guess total from well, I guess if you leave from LAX to Osaka Street, it would just be about 12 hours. So usually anyways, it's about 11 to 12 hours flight. But the thing is, is because of the current coronavirus situation here, there is a very limited amount of flights that we can take. And so, which is understandable, like, of course. Um... But that makes our trip very, very long. So I think that we'll be out flying slash waiting for flights for maybe about an entire 24 plus hours. So, which means, because, well, because we're not just taking one flight, we have to take a flight from Osaka to Tokyo, wait, Tokyo to LA, uh, Tokyo to San Francisco, wait for like a seven hour layover, and then from San Francisco to Las Vegas, where Tim's parents live, Tim's my husband, so where my in-laws live, where we'll be staying for the duration of the time we're in America. So that, all of that is like a 30 hour period. So I'm kind of thinking... I'll probably do like a poll on Instagram or something so maybe by the time this video goes out I've already decided but you guys could comment anyways but I was wondering if you guys were interested in seeing like a long 
well maybe I don't even know how long the vlog would be but me just vlogging seeing how much knitting and reading I get done during that time just because I have a lot of time the layovers are really long and I'll have nothing to do except to read and knit which sounds kind of nice actually but also at the same time that's literally what I've been doing for the past like three months while we were in here staying at home so I mean if you guys were interested in seeing how much stuff I get done in however long amount of time I'm on the road or in the air I guess comment below and let me know if you guys are interested in seeing that um, so I'll probably do like little updates here and there what I'm up to you know the whole vlog thing you guys have probably seen some before but um But yeah, so that's what I'm planning to do, and during that time, I'll be obviously knitting on this thing, and probably going to be changing in between this and this, but mainly focusing on my shawl. And then I'll be reading and stuff like that, so, um, yeah, I think that's all the knitting stuff. That is all the knitting. Um, let me see here. Reading. So, so for those of you who are new here, I just recently from the last episode. So, I don't know if you guys want to see the last episode. New things happen. Um, I just started to do a little segment at the end where I talk about the books that I've been reading because I'm a very avid reader. Um, so yeah, so this is like what my reading life has been like. I keep all my stuff on my Goodreads. Maybe I should link uh, my profile down below. I update my Goodreads all the time. I'm like kind of obsessed with it. Subsessed. I'm obsessed with it. So um, Let's see, what have I been reading? I think the last time I talked to you guys was when I was currently reading, um, yeah, Road Doll, The Umbrella Man and Other Stories by Road Doll, and I'll be putting the title up here. Um, I guess I should mention the books that I talk about in the description box, too, so yeah. Um, so I read The Umbrella Man and Other Stories by Road Doll. Rodal is one of my favorite authors. Um, I read everything by him. I've already read maybe like three or four of his short story collections already. So, but I didn't have one. But anyways, they're all in the States. All my books are in the U.S. right now at my in-laws house. And so I went to the bookstore um, near my house, well not really near my house, but like a big bookstore that also sells, um, English literature, or like English written books, because I can't, I'm not very good at reading in Japanese yet. So I found this and then I thought I'd buy it because I knew I'd love it anyways. And so I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. Um, mostly, well there was like, the first half of the book had stories that I've never heard, read before on it, but the last half had pretty much all of them I've already read before, so I kind of just like, not skimmed through, I read it, but I didn't pay attention as much as I would have because I've read it like a few times already. So anyways, I still gave it 4 out of 5 stars because I still loved those stories I've already read. I've just read them before. But the newer stories that I haven't read were just as good. These are a little more on the creepy side, I guess, of Road Doll. He, this is a, and by the way, this is a adult short story collection. Um, I mean, kids can obviously read it too, but um, if you don't know, Road Doll also writes for adults as well as children. So I read that. That was good. And then after that, I read... Um, the Housekeeper and the Professor by Yoko Ogawa. Um, this is another book I picked up at the bookstore when I picked up that Road Doll book earlier. Um, this is just a little, I'll put a picture up, but it's like a very small 
quick read, but it's still very good. It was very different. So it's about um, it's about a professor, a senior. He's a senior, like as in he's like a he's old. Um, who has been on a motorcycle accident in his middle age that caused his um that caused brain damage so he only has 80 minutes of memory until he forgets everything everything just kind of resets after 80 minutes and so um there's a housekeeper gets hired to take care of him in his house because obviously he can't take care of himself and he um he and the housekeeper connect learn how to connect in their own way I guess it's it's not a love story or anything and then her housekeeper's son um the, the housekeeper's son also starts connecting with the professor and it's kind of like this a study of this relationship and how as humans you don't have to connect in like I don't want to say like a normal way but like there's other ways you could connect other than being able to speak and share memories you can also connect through mathematics which is, happens to be what the professor loves and so they connect through that and how and it's just like a little study of how of human connection and how special that can be and so yeah highly recommend it I gave it a four out of five stars um I think these are all four out of five stars. No, well, there's a three star in here. And then after that, I read Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tokarczuk. And um, this one, I feel like I've talked to you guys about these books. Sorry if I'm repeating some stuff because I don't really remember where I stopped and st stopped and started. But anyway, so Olga Tokarczuk is um, a Nobel Prize winner and a, I want to say she won the Man Booker Prize for one of her books before, but um, Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead is a um, kind of, I think some people call it like an eco-thriller, like um, it's a very difficult book to describe. It follows a woman who is quirky and she's like one of those weird old ladies that lives down the street types of ladies. She lives in a very isolated, not even a town, not even a village, like very isolated little homestead type of place in the middle of the woods. Um, and it's about how she and her nearby neighbors kind of go through this weird time where people start to die. <laughs> um, like a couple people, like first a neighbor dies and then that follows another neighbor who dies and then it kind of like, it's kind of this weird little situation happening and people in the nearby town don't know what's going on and she kind of feels she's weird in a way where she feels as though the animals in the woods are trying to take revenge on the humans for hunting them because it's a very hunting heavy type of town that they live in because it's so far out in the woods um so that's what her theory is and then all the neighbors think she's crazy there's no way that deer can just like kill a human by pushing them over a cliff like somebody else has had to do it and you know that that's true but also is she right are the deer is the deer trying to kill these people like so it's kind of like a some people call it an eco a eco thriller type of genre book and this book i think won the nobel the nobel prize not really sure or she won it for some other book. Well, anyways, it was a really good book. Um, I gave it a four out of five stars. And then after that, I read 
Blow Up and Other Stories by Julio Cortazar. And this is a short story collection. Um, and I don't really remember this one. I remember I really enjoyed it though. It had some really weird. Oh, it had some really weird. Um, okay, I kind of remember. If you like magical realism and surrealist type of stories, you'll like this one. Yeah. There's like, um, like in the summary, it mentions the story about a summer vacation home in the country where a tiger roams in each ha in, in a room and people try to avoid the tiger in the house which I think is kind of like a metaphor. So it's like a very like surrealist but also metaphorical type of short story collection, which I really enjoy those types of stories. So I gave that one four out of five stars. Um, an audiobook I listened to is called The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. It's a recent release, I believe, or maybe it's like 2019, which is kind of recent for me at least. Um, it was a really good audiobook. It has different narrators in it, so if you like different people talking for different characters, you'd really enjoy this. Um, this is like a mystery, what happened type of story where um, there is a... Um, and it also kind of switches back and forth between times, so there's like a part in the past where this family is slowly coming to like a very strong charismatic personality guy who's slowly taking control of their home and making it into this making it into like a cult like situation and then you know that some of the this isn't a spoiler you know that some of the adults in that family die for mysterious under mysterious circumstances and then it kind of switches forward into the present time where some of the, where this other girl who seems unrelated to, you know, they're related obviously because she's related to somehow to the family because obviously they're in the same book, but she seems unrelated to this family and you don't know why we're following her. And then it kind of and then you kind of um, slowly realize like what her place is in the story and what happened in the past and how it connects to the present and just kind of all comes together really nicely. And it was a really good story and I really like the ending and I highly recommend it if you guys are into like mystery, whodunit, what happened type of thing. Um, also like it's like a family saga type of thing too so I recommend that um another book that I read I gave this one three stars so not as good but it was still pretty good was Dracula's Guest and Others Weird Stories by Bram Stoker so Bram Stoker wrote Dracula which is why this book is called Dracula's Guest and Other Weird Stories um so this one has like maybe like five or six short stories and then the last um bit like maybe like a third of the book is a novella called the white worm that he didn't release um this is all like released posthumously by his widow so he did i don't think he really meant for any of this to come out but i know some of the stories were published in like magazines during that time while he was still alive but, um, I gave this three stars because the short stories were good. I enjoyed the plot and, like, the mystery and, like, the thrillerness of it and the Bram Stokerness of those short stories. But things got really annoying in The White Worm in the novella. He was so racist and sexist in that thing. It was so hard to read. It was just, like so um, I don't even know how to describe it it was just like I understand that he was like a man of his time but also it was just like 
so racist and so sexist but I just kind of like wanted to I was like so close to finishing it that I didn't want to I don't count books that I don't finish as part of like my yearly goal like so since I was so close to finishing it and I really wanted that book to just count towards my goal I just finished it anyways but I really hated the white worm that last story was just like ridiculous and like all it's yeah, it was just ridiculous. It was like laughable. Like I couldn't take the plot seriously anymore after he started saying like racial and sexist slurs and like blaming the minority for all the problems that happened. To it was just too much, especially like during this time. It was just too much to read. But anyways, I just like pushed through it and hated every moment of that part. But anyways, I gave it a three stars because... I don't think I would read this book again, but also it was entertaining in the beginning. Three stars is just like my whatever, just take it whatever kind of star rating. So I just gave him that and just whatever. He was good in Dracula, but I don't know if I want to read his books again because I don't want to buy a book where there's like really annoying people in it. Well, anyway, so that was like disappointing but like uh kind of book but there's that moving on i read underland a deep time journey by robert mcfarlane this is a non-fiction book and it was really interesting actually because um it kind of digs into like the um idea of of earth's subterrain i guess is what you would say so he kind of goes into like the different terrains under the ground like cave systems and like um he also goes to like Antarctica to look at glacier systems and like um mining and things like that it sounds really boring when I explain it but Robert McFarlane kind of puts it into like this different perspective where he kind of connects it more personally to us as humans and how we are more connected to the underground than we realize especially when it comes to like burials and art and our curiosity as human beings to explore what's some explore a place where we can't see just like how we explore um, the sky and the universe, we also have deep urges to search for things underground. And so I, I think this book was really interesting, especially when it comes to like ecology and like the environment and how we we don't take care of the earth as much as we should in a way and um it kind of also puts into perspective like how humans have been interacting with their um with the earth over time and how our current millennium or how our era our current like highly advanced no, it's not even highly advanced but like our current era of technology and how this era has changed the earth's environment like irre irreparably I want to say anyways I'm kind of rambling for this one but it was really good very thought-provoking type of non-fiction book um it does get a little bit dry sometimes because he does talk about like geology and like very sciencey type of stuff sometimes but in all the other times he's very literary he's very thoughtful in his words um and he has i like his writing style a lot too so I do recommend this if you're looking for a non-fiction book to read. And then lastly, I just finished this audiobook yesterday. 
Um, it's called A Single Thread by uh, Tracy Chevalier. Chevalier? Chevalier. Um, I listened to this as an audiobook, and it's about a. Uh, so it's set in the time between World War One and World War Two, and um, it follows a woman who lost her fiance in World War One, and she hasn't married anybody since. And back in that time, it's well, this is in the UK or in Britain. Um, and in that time, it was super weird. And, um, and, and not acceptable for a woman to not be married by her age. I think she's like around 40-ish, not married, no kids, and so she's trying to find her little place in her village, and she finds that there is an embroidery club at her local cathedral where they are embroidering kneelers and pillows and cushions for the church. And it's not of, there is religion in this novel. I'm not a religious person, but I did find that religion does play a big role in this book, but it's not as, it's a very like, not passive, although it does play a big role, it's a very literary type of novel that doesn't push it onto you, I find, so, which I appreciated because some, sometimes novels do that where you're like, clearly this author is looking to convert some people, but no, it's a very literary, like, has to do with the plot type of mentions, and so you guys were wondering about that but um because it does a majority of this um book does take place like near or at this church so um or this cathedral and it's like a very big part of the main character's life but anyway she tries to find her place in that and she finds that place at her um embroidery club and i I thought I decided to read I decided to read it because I thought maybe it would be like a knitting club type of thing and she does explain like why she likes doing such repetitive tasks and like why even though it's like the stitches are so small why she feels like such a sense of fulfillment at the end of making the project and I'm like I totally understand I totally get it so I think this is a great book for knitters or like crafty people in general of like some of a story, an uplifting story about why a craft that's tedious to some people might be so fulfilling to others. And also, like, it's about love and loss and, like, how things, even though they're different, doesn't mean that they're bad, pretty much, is what this book is about. So, I highly recommend it. The audiobook was good. Narrator's good. I think it'd be good in paperback as well. So yeah, and what am I currently reading? Sorry, I read a ton of books while the last time I talked to you guys. So um currently reading one Italian folk tales um collected slash edited by Italo Calvino, which is another one of my favorite authors. He wrote um what I, <laughs> Invisible Cities. He also wrote um the complete, the complete cosmic comics, I think, is what it's called. But he, um, I love all his novels, and so I just decided to read these Italian folk tales, and they're just very simple, like very folk tale-y, Like there once was a girl, and she did something stupid, and then she gets married, and she's happily ever after, and it's just very like I think there's like. 60-ish short, very short folk tales in there and they're just like little like bite-sized little pieces that I really just like to read every now and then. So I'm reading that and I think that's all I've been reading really. I'm currently on hold for a couple audiobooks that I've been waiting for for like six weeks. 
so I haven't started any other audiobook just in case that my hold uh, that I could borrow my hold um, one of them is the Dutch house by um, what's her name no oh, Anne Patchett the Dutch house and it's narr it's an audiobook narrated by um, Tom Hanks <laughs> So I think it, the audiobook would be really good. So I've been kind of waiting for it and it's supposed to be delivered June 1st, which is in a couple days. Yeah, in a couple days. So I really want to read that. I might download one for the plane trip um, just because I'm going to be out and about for so long. I think there probably will come a time when my eyes are tired and I don't want to look at anything to read. I just want to listen. So I'll probably download something for that. But yeah, that is it. Guys, thank you for sticking around while I ramble to you about books. Sometimes I wonder if you guys are still there. So if you guys are still here, thank you for watching until this point. I really appreciate you sticking around. Um, let me know what you guys have been knitting and what you've guys been reading. I would really like to know what you guys have been interested in nowadays. Um, I love book recommendations any time of the year, no matter what's happening. Um, let me know how you guys have been doing with your knitting. It's been hot wherever you are. If it's been hot, are you knitting summer knits? Or are you still wearing knitting shawls like I am? Because who cares if I'm sweating while I'm knitting? Um, but yeah, thanks for hanging around. So you can find me on Instagram and on Ravelry as Cozy Cardigans. And um, I'll also link my Goodreads account down below. I think I'm perpetually reading on that one. It's amazing, perpetually reading. And I'll talk to you guys next time which might be the travel vlog maybe if not i will see you when i'm in the u.s so thanks for sticking around mm -hmm.